What's going on guys? It's Joe from Total Justice Gaming. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please remember to hit that hit the like the video, hit that subscribe button. We're gonna be working hard to bring you guys buddy fight videos five days a week. So we are now several days after the events of Level Up Hero Heroes. Uh, we have got just a ton of deck profiles coming for you guys. Um, I am going to be dedicating this entire week to Hero World. Uh, we're starting off with Shadow Heroes, Dark Heroes, whichever one we want to call them. We are going to be trying to shoot for two videos a week because I have just about every uh, Hero World deck made. And almost all of them have been uh, either built or upgraded to where they all need profiles. So, we're jumping into one of my favorites, uh, which is the Dark Hero deck. I was very fortunate. I got the SP for um, Makuro. I believe either myself or Ford pulled it. I can't remember which one. A lot happened in the box openings. Uh, we got like a total of... 26 boxes, so yeah, uh, a lot of cards. But uh, we're going to hop into the deck profile. Uh, my buddy has been changed. We are now in the Black White Shadow Lord. Makuro is the buddy. Uh, we got our Makuro SP uh, flag. I'm really happy about that, our secret flag. And we will jump right into this deck profile. So, naturally, as the buddy, we're going to be running four copies of Makuro. I was very fortunate. I also got a hold of two buddy rares as well as the SP. This version of Makuro is a 625, so he's a little weaker than uh, Successor Omni just by like a less than 1,000 offense. That's not too bad. I mean, that just means with the current power creep as we are right now, the majority of monsters can swing into Makuro and deal damage to you. Um, however, at the end, of its ability is where this card really shines. At the end of a battle of this card, if you have no monsters on your field, choose a size 2 or less dark hero monster in your drop zone, and you may pay a gauge. If you do, Call the chosen card by paying its call cost. This ability only activates once per turn. On top of that, Makuro has Penetrate, and his transform cost is now Pay Gauge, Pay a Life, as opposed to uh, Successor, which was Pay 2 Gauge. So, I like him. He sets off a lot of abilities. Um, he's able to control the flow of battle because this can be used on your turn to deal uh, for an additional swing or on the opponent's turn where we have newer cards that actually do trigger on the opponent's uh, turn. So we get a lot of uh, variety for this Makuro. I really, really do enjoy him. We will just move on forward. I really don't have too much to say on him uh, other than I like him. He's the new buddy. He works out really well. Uh, I finally was able to take out the old Makuros and replace him with it. So, moving on, we are going to be playing... I'm missing a sleeve or a card. Uh, two copies of the old, ver old buddy, which is... Uh, successor of the Omni Lord Makuro. Uh, 626. Read them real quick. Uh, at the end of this battle, this card attacked. If you have four, four life or less or no monsters on the field, you can pay a gauge. If you do, stay on this card, destroy a monster on the opponent's field. Uh, this ability activates only once per turn. He, you can also transform into him for a cost of two. So he can swing in pretty well. He can defend a little bit better than. Uh, Black White Omni uh, Makuro. Let's back a little bit. And uh, he controls the board and has the ability to restand for a second attack. So we want to run two of him. I may bump him up to a three of I just got to see how frequently I draw the Makuros uh, to uh, transform into them. But right now we're going to leave him at a two of. Just because we're still fiddling with the deck numbers, uh, deck testing has been pretty good thus far. I don't really need too many to transform into, but since 
Uh, neither one of them, both of them can be destroyed by item destruction effects. Um, I still want to, I'm still trying to figure out what the final number for this Makuro is. So right now we're running him at a 2 of, it'll possibly bump up to a 3. Next up, we're running three copy of the new Schwartz. Uh, the new Schwartz is very, very deadly. So he is an 8-2-3. Uh, call cost is discard a hero and pay to gauge. That's a bit of a cost, but it's worth it in the long run. When this enters your field, choose a monster in your opponent's field and destroy the chosen card. If this enters the field during your opponent's turn, instead nullify the chosen card's abilities and destroy that card. At the end of the battle of this card, you may return this uh, to the field to your hand. And Schwartz has a double attack. So for pitching a card in two gauge, you get uh, field, uh, field control by blowing up a monster. On top of that, if it comes into play via the new Makuro, you can nullify uh, monster's abilities and blow them up, meaning this can blow bots on the opponent's turn. That's very important. Uh, he also has double attack, and he hits for really decent numbers at an 8. So, all in all, I really like him. Right now, he's sitting at a 3 of. I think it's important to be able to get him as quickly as possible, except, especially for this new ability of being able to come out on the opponent's turn. So, again, we're running him at a 3 of. Moving into the size 1s, uh, we're running 4 copies of Sacrifice, Iron Moon Slash... Uh, Iron Moon Slash uh, replaced um, uh, the Scar. The reason for that is is he hits for numbers at a 6-2-3. We're always going to try for a 5 or 6 attack uh, for our primary attackers. On top of that, you can pitch a card from your hand to deal a point of damage. So that speeds up their uh, life loss, getting to the 4. That way you can Infinity Death Crest a lot quicker. And plus he destroys himself at the battle of the end turn, so you can tra uh, chain his destruction off of with another spell on the deck. So I'm running him out of Fora because he's our new primary attacker since he can hit those numbers that we need. And the burn is just a nice little bonus. Following up, running three copies of SD Schwartz. Uh, I know I need to be running four of him. Unfortunately, I'm only able to have three right now. They're a little hard to come by. Uh, he's at a 3-2-1. Uh, when he enters the field, uh, I can discard a Dark Hero from my hand. If I do, I can gauge 2, and then at the end of the battle, uh, he returns back to hand. So, gauge acceleration for a simple discard. Uh, he doesn't hit for the numbers we like, but he's an SD form, so that's not uncommon. SD forms are usually at least half to a quarter of the... Uh, normal monster forms attacks from what I'm seeing. So, I'm running him out of 3 of because I just need the gauge acceleration. Uh, I don't need heavy gauge acceleration, but uh, with FC Schwartz return to hand, I'll always have at least two. Following that up, uh, we're running two copies of Weiss. Weiss is definitely needed in the deck now because there's a lot more item focus uh, coming back into the meta again. With uh, Thunder Empire, always needing weapons for stuff. Um, I'm fairly certain we'll be seeing more items when Dual Golem comes out. Uh, that upcoming Chaos Weapon deck will be coming out, so we need item destruction for that. Uh, Oni has weapons that we need to get rid of, so Weiss is very much needed now. Uh, he sits in the same stats as SD Schwartz, but he's more for utility than attacking. His call cost is pay a gauge. Uh, when he enters the field, I can discard a dark hero. If I do, I can destroy an opponent's uh, item, an item on the field. And then again, like all Schwartz, uh, since I believe he is Schwartz's brother or uh, troop member, I'm not sure what the story on Weiss is. We'll just say brother. Um, he pops back to hand after the end of his attacking, so you have reoccurring item destruction, which is, again, very necessary in this meta. Uh, following up, we're looking at one of the newer cards, uh, Grey Wind Vent. Or Vent. Uh, 3 one, one 
So he's a little lackluster in terms of uh, field presence, uh, in terms of damage. Uh, however, he's still, likewise, he's much more of a utility card. So counter during your opponent's turn. If you have no monsters on the field, you can call this from your hand. Uh, when this card enters the field during your opponent's turn, choose a monster and pay a gauge. Uh, if you do, the chosen card gets a minus one crit, and then at the end of battle with this card, destroy it. Uh, I'm running him out of Fora because he is a very necessary utility card. Uh, I really stress trying to run at least three to four copies of him because being able to come into play on the opponent's turn, you're limiting your damage quite heavily. Uh, so potentially nine damage can turn into six damage or four damage can turn into two damage. So it's very, very necessary. It's a very necessary card in the deck now. Uh, this allows Dark Heroes to not be the gla as much of a glass cannon by being able to mitigate some of the opponent's damage output. So I highly recommend running him at least two or three or four of. I'm going to be running him at a four of. Of course, since we need to, we're going to look at the zeros. The zeros are obviously Noble of Darkness Kill Knight. He's the primary card we always want to discard. Um, two on one, which are fine for a size zero. Uh, when this card is put from your hand into the drop zone, uh, you can either gauge one or you can cause your opponent to lose a gauge. Uh, if I have a Dark Hero item uh, equipped and I, for whatever reason, put him on the field to battle, he can pop back to my hand. He's who you always want to try and pitch. So, um, we're running him out of four of. Moving on, we're of course going to be running four Infinity Death Crests. Uh, this card lets you just steal games out of nowhere. Uh... I really don't need to emphasize too much on this one. Uh, gotta have a Dark Hero item. Gotta have four life. For, opponents gotta be at four life or less. Or uh, if there are no monsters on my field, uh, I just can have a Dark Hero item, pay two gauge, and deal four damage that can't be reduced. So, simple, quick kill method. Next up, for uh, we're moving into spells. Uh, we're going to be running four of the I've seen through your moves. This is our primary open center shield. Uh, this is just the shadow, uh, the dark hero variant art. So I just slapped it in there. We're running it at four. Uh, dark hero hideout. We're going to be running this at a three of. You can also run it at a four of. It's just personal preference on my thing. I see it enough getting it out of three of. This lets us continue to gain hand, uh, keep a hand presence since we're discarding cards so much. Uh, it's the set spell that says whenever I play a dark hero, uh, I get to draw a card once per turn. I can always set one dark hero, first hero hideout uh, one at a time, meaning uh, it's got to be going up before I can set another one. Uh, again, this is personal preference on my opinion. I run it at a 3 of. I see no other decks run at a 4 of just to see increased consistency of getting the card. Uh, I'm running it at a 3 of uh, because all I need to do is get one and then the other two can become pitch fodder because it is it's uh, just necessary for pitching a card and drawing cards. Uh, next up, we're running three copies of He is of the Lowest Ranks. Uh, this chains with any of our cards that are destroyed. So if they happen to destroy a card uh, out of combat, or we have any of our cards that say they destroy themselves at the end of combat, we can trigger and go search for any dark hero monster or item in the deck and put it to our hand just for uh, having something destroyed. Next up, we're going with our three copies of I'm Finished With You. Uh, destroy Dark Hero on your monster on your field. Put Gauge 1 and draw a card. I uh, can only cast this once per turn. Again, we have monsters that uh, are going to get destroyed, so let them be destroyed for a bit more profit. We're going to be running this out of 3 of. We're running, going to be running now two copies of a new card. Uh, I've waited for this moment. Uh, you can only cast this if you have no monsters on the field. Uh, pay a gauge, pay a life, destroy a monster on the opponent's field. Very, very good because it's just a gauge and a life. If you don't have any monsters on the field, that's very easy to achieve in this deck. 
On top of this, uh, there is no size restriction for the kill condition, so you can kill size threes. Uh, this helps you control the battle a little bit against such decks as Chaos or any size three focused deck. Uh, very easy conditions, good spell. I'm just going to be running it out of two of right now. Following that up, uh, two copies of Stop right there. This is the uh, Hero World equivalent of Snake Gaze. Um, you may only cast this if you have no monsters on your field. Again, a very easy condition to fulfill with um, Dark Hero. Uh, pay Gage, pay a life to use it. Uh, counter, uh, rest a monster in your opponent's field. So this is the Dark Hero version of Snake Gaze. I believe that you could also use this very easily on uh, in the Satsuki deck, so expect to see that on uh, the Satsuki uh, decks too, maybe. I'm not sure. That's just conjecture on my part. But we're running this out of two of. And then our final two ofs is Orso the Dream I Had Went. Uh, this is the Pay 2 Null 5 spell. So if we're going in for the kill, or they cast anything for like a shield or something, we are able to prevent it. And that is the deck. And of course, now that we've run through the deck, I find that third piece of Makuro. So guys, we are running... Three, Makuro, three Shadow Makuros that just got stuck to a card. I apologize for that, but uh, we are running three uh, successor of the Omni Lord Makuro. All right, guys, so that is my version of Shadow Heroes that got upgraded. Again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll be back a little bit later, either today or this week, because we are going to be plowing through all these uh, Hero World decks. So we, again, please like, subscribe. We love hearing you guys' comments. And I want to thank you guys for watching Total Justice Gaming. Have a good day.